if I was to ask you the key to becoming Heisman quarterback, finalist, an NFL draft pick, you would probably say the key is to go about seven years between starts, right? That's that's the key way it to do it? Seems to be the sweet spot. Yeah. About seven years, <laughs> just sitting back and learning as much as you can. What would you say your unconventional path has meant to the kind of player you are, the kind of person you are? It's really just given me a lot of chances to have you know, a lot more experiences, um, you know, seeing different guys play in front of me, honestly, and seeing the different styles that are successful. I've been around a ton of different styles of quarterbacks during those seven years until I finally started in college and kind of just, you know, always keeping my foot on the gas, but at the same time, you know, seeing what works for those guys and, you know, obviously being here for the past two years, it's been super helpful. Um, you know, seeing more of the mental side and just all that grind that goes into it off the field. And I feel like that really helped take my game to the next level, just especially these past two years. I saw that your grandfather played for the Houston mm -hmm. Oilers yeah. in the NFL. What do you remember about how that influenced your desire to pursue the sport? From as long as I could remember, that was the first thing that made me want to play football. I just remember, you know, being at the park with my grandpa and you know, teaching us how to throw and kick, which I still haven't figured out the kicking part, so. <laughs> it's all right, we don't need but, you to do that, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> exactly, so those early memories with him, you know, really stick with me and you know, I really appreciate you know, him taking the time with me and my brother growing up and you know, instilling how to do those things um, and t take us to the next level, even when we were little kids. Uh, it's just really cool to have those memories and you know, just very grateful and appreciative when you are so competitive, and of course everyone wants to be a starter, what are the biggest challenges when you are the backup? And how do you take it from being something that could feel like a negative to use it as a positive, use it as a way to grow? What are the mental challenges of being in a role like that? Honestly, just make it more simple. It's really not that complicated. You know, don't make it about competing with another person. You're competing with yourself every day, even if you are the starter no matter what depth you are, compete with yourself because that's really all you can do at the end of the day. And that just keeps it simple, keeps you from overthinking things, but at the same time, it keeps you getting better every single day. And, you know, one step closer to, you know, when you do have that opportunity that you're able to take advantage of it. And in terms of overthinking, NFL offenses aren't always the easiest thing to pick up. And I'm sure one of the keys of being a backup that can be helpful is getting a chance to learn the offense. Then you get a new offensive coordinator. How much more equipped do you feel now than a couple years ago to pick up a new NFL offense? Oh, I mean, night and day. I know when I first came in, especially with, uh, you know, Tom Blaine and Griff and all those seasoned vets in that room. Sorry, you can just call them old. Yeah, you, know. <laughs> yeah, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, going from college and then just diving right into that, you know, veteran quarterback room was crazy to see. And, you know, I just tried to sit there and soak up as much knowledge as I could and half the time my head was just spinning what they were talking about. But you know, slowly I just stayed, you know, as focused as I could to just try to keep picking up. And finally I could kind of keep up with them on, on their level um, and understand what they were kind of talking about. Because you know, once you've been in the league for as long as they have, it's it's very high level thinking. And that's the thing about, you know, the NFL, everyone's so talented. It's a it's a very mental game. But I'm just, you know, super fortunate to have had the opportunity to come into a room like that and learn so much from them and, you know, just looking to build off of that. And what do you know about the new offensive coordinator, Dave Canales, and what his system might be or how it could lend itself to your skills? Yeah, I know his his system is very quarterback friendly. You know, he's had a lot of success with the quarterbacks he's worked with in his past. Um, and, you know, I'm super fortunate to, you know, be working with him, you know, from all of our conversations thus far. Um, have been very insightful and you know make me very excited for this fresh start we have in this building on the offensive side. When you're a quarterback you're asked to maybe be a lot more than just a good football player that it's called the CEO of the team or they talk so much about leadership and all these intangibles off the field things so how do you describe what you bring in that sense to the game or maybe how your teammates would describe you after being around you for a while in the type of quarterback you are other than just the X's and O's? Uh, I mean, I would just like to think that, you know, I'm a very consistent competitor. You know, I'm not gonna, you know, back off on any day. Show up to work every single day and, um, 
try to hold people around me accountable, you know, be very positive. And I feel like that's the best, that's the, how you could be the most successful is just keep the guys around you very positive and make it a good work environment. And at the end of the day, you still gotta work very hard. You know, it is a, a very violent game. So, you know, being positive doesn't hurt and because um, it's such a violent game. So just always being there for my teammates too and just trying to be as consistent as I can in you know, every phase of my life inside the building and outside the building. What is your why? What are the things that make Kyle Trask tick? What makes you get up in the morning? What makes you mm. put in that extra work when it's hot Tampa weather outside? You know, obviously my family, you know. Um, they've been so supportive of me ever since I've started this journey. And, you know, coming to all of my games, or as, as many games as they can come to, even when I was a backup for those seven years, like you said, <laughs> uh, you know, showing their support even through those tough times. Um, why would I not give it my all for them and they've showed all that support for me. Um, and I'm, at the end of the day, I'm doing what I love to do. So I'm just excited to continue on this journey.